I already see that this is just going to be a woman shrieking at the top of her lungs about something that she's emotionally attached to. Here we go. Here we go. If I was in the room right now, I'd just be like, ah, like just, ah, I'd just start twitching. Just, ah, ah, ah. And good evening, everyone. I am Sarah, the Raging Tomato, here bringing to you live the debate between Andrew Wilson and Undead Chronic. Our topic this evening is stepdads are cuckolds. I didn't make it up. I just post it. Um, I'm here pulling scraps from the bottom of the barrel. So here we are live. Uh, for clarification purposes, I reached out to both of these gentlemen. I saw that there was uh, some spattle going between the two of them. So I decided to see if they wanted to do this and I decided to host it. So here we are. Um, I do have uh, two big rules of engagement for this evening, and uh, I want to make sure I clarify them. I'm well aware we have two very big personalities, two very big voice voices on one screen. One rule I have is you can yell and cuss at each other all you want. The only thing I ask is you don't do it over each other. If I have to intervene, it's going to be because the audience cannot hear anything that either of you are saying. That will be the one and only time I will intervene in terms of that concept. The other rule I have is that uh, there are, I recognize this is a personal lifestyle attack. No big deal, I understand it. However, one thing that I won't allow on screen is attacking children. Children are to be left completely out of this or any form of doxing of any sort. It's a big no-no, not only on YouTube, but in my personal principles as well. If we attack children, I just remove from the screen, take my ball and go home, and we call it a day. That's going to be how that is. Um, we are going to start with four-minute openings and end on four-minute closings. Uh, Undead Chronic will have the first uh, opening statement seat since he is the challenger, and then Andrew will <coughs> close us first. Uh, this debate will go no, lo no later than 640 as far as the arguments are concerned. Uh, then we will close it down and end on closing statements. There we go. And then I will go into Andrew Super Bad, Chats, Spurge, read and Spurge, respond. Spurge. Undead Chronic and Andrew Wilson are Andrew both welcome Bad, to stay Spurge, and Spurge. answer to those. Uh, I will bad, not Spurge, be hosting Spurge, any Spurge. form of open panel after this event. I don't However, disagree with anything Andrew says, Spurge, uh, Spurge, Spurge, but his family, screen, Spurge, Spurge, Please feel Spurge. free to check in with our mods. They're happy to drop your links after, uh, at the end of the show, and we're happy to redirect in that, in that aspect. Um, gentlemen, do you agree with everything being said this evening? Andrew, to you? Yeah, I agree. Undead Chronic, to you? If the kids are 18, can I bring them up or no? No kids at all. No so kids no at all. Adults. And what no I'm family saying, members. no, no family members. Um, I will say Rachel is kind of in since she is in the public light. I think that would be. Yeah, kind she's of a public the, figure. She's yeah. it's fine to attack but public as figures. As far as any additional family members, now if you're smart enough, you can speak in abstract and get through this argument and mm -hmm. make points outside of that. Um, but however, bringing up people personally, actual names or any specific. I don't even events, know the names. Don't worry about that. That would be great. Um, I think you can do this in abstract or in a generalization and get through the argument respectfully and actually make your points. I think you can do just, it. Uh, just just, jump on me early if I'm crossing that line, okay? Just stay out of the personal realm. That's all I ask. Well, um, okay. Do you agree to all of that? I, I Sure. Okay. Any final questions, gentlemen? No. All right. Undead Chronic, I leave it to you to open. Cool. There is a mountain. It's called Cuck Mountain. He who sits at the top of Cuck Mountain is Mr. Jack Murphy. Actual cuckold. People who watch their wives engage in sexual activities with other people. Why is cucking bad? Why do men not like to be cucked? Because you're giving up access to your sexual resources to other men. Right? There are levels of cucking. Everybody here listening is a cuck. If you pay taxes to the federal government, right? Unfortunately, we all get cut that way because your money gets sent to single mothers and their bastard kids through welfare, through whatever it is. I would argue that a man who marries a single mother is higher on cuck mountain than someone who says, I want to have my own children and spend all my resources on my own children. That's pretty much it. 
Okay. Um, I put the floor to Andrew. Okay. That's that. Really, that's it. So that's all you wanted to do there. Okay. Am I supposed to respond or? No, I, I was just just making sure. Um, no, no, yeah, okay. yeah, pretty much. So, uh, as expected, this uh, I think that this is just going to be a kind of routine hater debate. I actually rather enjoy these more than any other type because my haters really don't know very much about me at all and basically just make assumptions or reuse old attacks, which have already been addressed a hundred times. Uh, the fact they get so much wrong obviously amuses me, but the attacks usually center around my wife, the kids. It doesn't really have anything to do with what I say, but rather who I chose to marry and have kids with. Mm -hmm. The topic of this debate is going to be centered around, uh, of course, uh, is being a stepfather cuckoldry. Now, a person can create any definition of the word cuckoldry they like. I think that we just saw uh, Undead Chronic do that, for instance. Um, but it does need to point to a category, and that category should contain information which is coherent. The etymology of the word cuckold comes from Middle English cuckweld, from Old French cuckwalt, from the cuckoo bird. The equivalent words in French and other languages apply to both the bird and the adulterer. Cuckold has never been applied to the bird in the English language, for instance, and that's where some of the nebulousness of the term comes from. Shakespeare and other playwriters popularized the term because all rights in the name were perilineal uh, from father to son, so peasants, nobles, monarchs alike had a very real fear of being cuckolded, which meant their wife would cheat and they'd end up raising and siring a child not their own unknowingly. Thus, if ever later revealed, it could topple entire noble lines, and in the past, that actually has happened. The word has evolved to include men who want to watch other men have sex with their significant other. He mentioned Jack Murphy. I think that's a good example. Uh, wife, girlfriend, whatever. But this has only been a recent inclusion as a pornographic category, and it describes essentially the same behavior just in the style of fetish, where now the man is fetishizing not knowing if the child is his or not. This is by far the most common use of the word in modernity, what most people mean when they say it. The theme crossover with the etymology makes perfect sense because in both cases, the meaning is defaulting to not knowing if your offspring is actually yours. A stepfather or mother, on the other hand, doesn't fit that criteria as paternity isn't what is in question. Joseph, the husband of Mary, for instance, was stepfather to Jesus Christ. If we are to use Undead Chronic's definition here or use... Uh, any of the word cuckold as the way he says it, we would have to blaspheme and say God cuckolded Joseph, which makes zero sense, as in that sense then, every man on planet Earth would be a cuckold by this logic, as the thing which makes us us is created by the divine God, and it's called the soul. Also, there are further logical issues if we extrapolate this. To adopt also would be cuckoldry, as adoption and step-parenting is essentially, essentially the same concept, in fact, in the days of old, to be married to a woman with children was to adopt those children. The basic idea is that offspring which aren't yours, you are willing to provide resources for and love them. Rendering aid to any child, in fact, would be cuckoldry, as a sharing of your resources with a child would be exactly what a cuck or cuckold is doing by being a step-parent. But there's actually more. If a woman has children who are adults and no longer live with her, is the stepfather still a cuckold? He isn't sharing any resources at all, for instance. What about if a woman pays all the bills and takes care of all the responsibilities and not the man? Would he still be a cuckold? If the issue is that uh, his meaning of the word is that a cuckold is a man who sleeps with a woman who has children from another man, that also presents logical issues. For instance, what if she's a widow? Is he still a cuckold? What if the woman was pregnant with multiple babies but aborted them all? Is he still a cuckold? If the answer to any of these is yes, the logical extension is that just sleeping with a woman who has slept with any other man but you makes you a cuckold, which would likely include most of my audience and his. Also, what if she gave another dude a blowjob before you were with her? Is that still cuckoldry? I'm interested in a good faith debate on this, uh, though I don't think I'll get one. I'm still going to try to, though. Ultimately, it was pretty clear to me that Undead doesn't really know very much about me or my content and rather defers to what other people say which I think he should know better than to do. I never had any actual issues with the guy, but he seems to have some with me. My guess is that this will basically just be kind of a personal insult character attack, and we won't really get into the topic very much. With that, my opening is done. All right, the floor is open, gentlemen. So if a man watches another man impregnate his wife mm -hmm. and willingly raises the kid, he knows the kid isn't his. Is he not a cuckold? Yeah, he would be if he's getting enjoyment or entertainment from watching uh, another man impregnate his wife, yeah. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. So adoption, that's a very interesting point. Well, hang on. Can we stay on the, on the first point real quick? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so to to start with that, you wouldn't disagree with me that a man who would get enjoyment and not just their wife, girlfriend, whatever, uh, from watching another man have sex with their significant other, whoever that was, would be a cuckold, right? Yeah, that's probably the peak. That's the, you know, well, I think that that's definition of cuckold. Yeah. Would you agree with me that if you were to ask, maybe walk down the street and ask a thousand people what cuckold meant, that that would be the meaning most of them thought it meant? Probably, yes. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah, yeah. We can go to topic two. Yeah, so for adoption, mm -hmm. uh, you're giving resources to another man's child. Yep. Yeah, it's probably somewhere on Cuck Mountain. I don't see it as bad as you know, marrying a single mother, willingly giving your now. Now, I do, I do have an audio clip here of you saying that you would be willing to adopt. Yeah, well, it, that kind of changes. That's in flux. But if, I mean, if you would be willing to adopt, are you then admitting that you would be willing to be a cuckold? Well, I have to pay taxes, so I'm forced to be a cuckold on that. Yeah, on that but matter. even if we're going to use a tier, I so let me kind of reject a couple of categories. Mm -hmm. I would say that forced coercion wouldn't make you a cuckold. So, for instance, if like men broke into your house on Dead Chronic and they oh. they were like holding your wife hostage oh. and they held you right at at you know at gunpoint, and then they did things to your wife in front of you. I don't think that that would make you a cuckold because that was coercion and force. I think that it, the, there has to be like a, um, you know, some type of uh, participation in the watching and viewing, right? Yes. Yeah. So I, I don't think that uh, taxes, for instance, if you're if you're making the statement that that's done under under coercion, which I'm I'm sure you would, I don't think that, that would make a person a cuckold, right? But if a man gets cucked and doesn't know about it, he didn't consent to it, and he's raising another man's kids, he's still cucked. Yeah, well, I think that that's the etymology of the word is I would agree with you. So if a, if your wife stepped out, got pregnant, and then you unknowingly raised that kid, I would agree that that's cuckoldry, yes. Yeah. So I would agree so that that's the baseline etymology and that watching another man have sex with your girl on purpose would also fit that etymology. So I don't think consent really, really affects whether someone's getting cucked. Well, I think that consent is the whole basis for it. Because you're not consenting to raise the kid that isn't yours. You don't know it. So yeah. you're otherwise you would retract consent if you did know. That was the but whole man, point. Like that was the yeah. whole point, right? So if a king had a, had like a queen and she decided to like fuck the bard and she got pregnant by the bard uh, and then she had the kid, he unknowingly raised that kid. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he would be cuckolded, right? So but if he had known, he would retract consent. But today we have cuckold to consent. Yeah, yeah. So I think that that's the pornographic, um, like the, the the pornographic idea of it, and the the porn industry coined that term. And yeah, I would agree that that fits the etymology of the word because it's, uh, they're fetishizing that happening to them. Mm. So I, I do think that people can get cucked with or without their consent. Like I'm getting cucked. I don't want to be cucked by paying taxes, but I'm getting cucked. Yeah, but. Why, if, if it's done through coercion, I don't understand that. That's like saying, so like, for instance, if a woman were to be, you know, like, you know, essayed, for instance, mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't hold that against her. Like she didn't, there was nothing she did, right? She was just like jogging down the street and that happened to her. Mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't say that that's a sex partner, right? You would say that that was like this horrible thing that happened without her consent, right? Sure, but it was still a sexual activity. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree that, that there was sex involved in it. I'm just saying that uh, I think I think that what makes that the SA is the consent. And I think that that would be the same thing with cuckoldry, that both both types are based around consent, either consent to watch the woman do this mm -hmm. or uh, no consent to raising the other child. Yeah, so there's levels to the cuck mountain, and consent is not really, you can't say I didn't consent, I didn't get cucked. You can't say I consent. I didn't get cut. Consent doesn't really doesn't really determine whether or not you're getting cut. Well, I think it. If if you were to instance, um, if you were to find out that, um, uh, or or you had wanted your wife to screw another guy and get pregnant, sure. that wouldn't fit the idea of cuckoldry. At least not the the base word of cuckoldry, because the whole idea there is I did not consent to this, and you made a cuckold out of me. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm now raising a child that is not mine, um, and I assumed that it was. I think it's the consent issue that is the big issue. Yeah, no, I'd still call him a cuck. I still think that fits the spirit of the word. Now you, we got these old definitions. You got new definitions. You have oh well, 
it was this. Here's some birds. I think most men would agree letting your wife get pregnant willingly from another dude mm -hmm. is some cuck shit. Yeah, I agree. I wouldn't disagree with that. Okay. So when I did my opening statement, you said there was a lot of similar arguments, attacks, haterade, whatever it was, and I don't know you. I don't know you. Where was I wrong? Because I don't want to be wrong if I say you married a single mother and that was true. No, that's I'll true. That's true. I did I did marry a single mother. I'm not okay. sure how that um, relates to cuckoldry. Unless if if all you're saying here is that, mm -hmm. uh, is that uh, all of us are cucks to some degree and I'm just in some kind of higher tier of cuck than you are, yes. even though you're yes. also a cuck, <laughs> <laughs> right? Then, I mean, it just, it just doesn't seem like it's, um, that it's an argument with merit, really. Well, I'm, I'm trying to say that higher level cucks shouldn't be telling young men how to live their lives. Well, I don't tell anybody how to live their life. You don't preach? No. Nope. You don't? No. I have no ministry of whatsoever. Oh, well, that's an attack. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. What do you do mostly besides, because I've only seen you attacking hookers online. Oh, from whatever? Yeah. Like whatever clips? Point. Yeah. So yeah. I go on whatever. That started a few months ago. I go on anytime they ask me to guest on there. And sometimes we have interesting conversations and sometimes debates break out. Occasionally they're theological in nature, but um, mm -hmm. like my rule is not to ever give advice. Even though people DM me for it all the time, I literally tell them I don't give advice. It's a bad idea to give people advice because I don't know anybody's personal situation. And I feel like I could actually give somebody the wrong advice and it would lead them the wrong way. And then mm -hmm. I would be to blame for that. Yeah, that's a tricky situation. I mean, I'll give advice, but it's stuff like uh, no hymen, no diamond. Don't marry a single mother. Go to the gym. Very basic stuff. That's all uh, good advice. Yeah, but if some, you know, someone will call in and be like, yo, Chronic, I got this girl. We've been dating for five years. I love her. But she has a body count of three. Should I no hymen, no diamond, yeet out of there? It's like, look, bro, that's your life, man. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you to do to, to do that. I'm saying this. Yeah, is so I mean, means. but doesn't that kind of get to a lot of the core of the issue too, which is uh, every single situation is going to be different. And while I agree with you, um, I agree with you that probably a woman who is chaste and who is a virgin would probably be optimal for most men. There's less baggage. There's less all kinds of things. But you know, these guys who are in their 30s or in their 40s, they have to, they all have different situations, and not every woman who's a single mom is a bad person. Though I will admit that the rate of women who become single moms on purpose has now caused significant problems in regards to feminism. Um, but it, like every situation is going to be different, so it's very difficult even for you to um, to kind of broad uh, broad brush it any more than me. That's why you probably take it on a situation by situation basis. Yeah, I think when it comes to a single mother, I would always say no. But what if she was should... a like? What if she was a widow? No, no, because there's a woman out there without kids. Yeah, that's true. Like, but like, what if the guy? What if, you know? Like modern women. What I learned from whatever going on there so much is that modern women fucking suck, and it doesn't necessarily it doesn't necessarily <laughs> matter. <laughs> well, it, like, I agree it, with you. yeah, like it doesn't really even seem to matter uh they have kids they don't have kids this and that like they're all kind of entitled obnoxious brats uh for the most part very um very ungrateful brats and um you know the thing is is like i'm not so sure that even advising even if the woman has no kids she probably had four abortions right it's like i don't so it's hard to it's hard to give anybody advice it, the dating market's completely fucked i wouldn't even know what to do with it like if I was one of these pickup artists, I'd probably yeah. just give up, dude. Oh, yeah. You know, um. So a funny thing, you tweet, you uh, DM me. You said something like, I, "The date got canceled," and he said, "Debate." Yeah. I thought of the pickup artists I beefed with in the past. These dudes would legit sell a spot for a streamyard date, and so some, some supporter would would get on the streamyard and they'd have a a date with some probably OnlyFans girl for like thirty minutes, and then the next two hours would be four pickup artists like ripping the guy apart on how we didn't hold frame. And so when you said that, I, cause I know you didn't do it, but that was some funny shit in my mind. Yeah. Well, I've seen, um, I, I've actually, uh, debated with a lot of pickup artists, debated with destiny, Matt Dillahunty, a lot of the bigger debate names. I only actually go on whatever occasionally, but I mostly do uh, debates with high level personalities. Um, those are obviously a lot more fun to do. Uh, like for instance, I re the, the way I found out about you was when you were kind of, uh, just, going at Hunter Avalon, which I thought was fucking hilarious, right? Um, you know, I was the one who broke that story. I broke that story on the uh, on the Hunter Avalon thing. I was the one... I'm getting cucked? 
that his wife was doing this with all these dudes. Yeah. Yeah, that was gross. Yeah, Kingston emailed me, but I was like, I'm not sure if this is legit and or legal. So I just I let it I let it sit in my email box. Then he made the video the next day. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That was uh, that was fucking wild. But yeah, I mean, for the yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I was like, did you see Hunter Avalon on Twitter begging for donations to get shared custody? Yeah, 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 I did. I, well, actually, I tweeted about it. <laughs> it's like, because it was really funny. He had this tweet that went out with, um, he, he had done a debate with Fuentes, and he was like, I'm over here living the trad life, right? And so oh. I put that tweet up, I put that tweet up side by side with his, I need money, <laughs> I need money for custody. <laughs> so bad. Well, like, part of me wants to feel bad for him, but just... How he's acted over the years, it's – I'd like to see it. I'd like, I like to see leftist cuckolds – well, he got cucked, but he's not a willing cuck. I'd like to see leftists get destroyed by the family court in public. Yeah, well, I, you know, the thing is, though, is maybe I have different motivations for that. I'd prefer to see them come over to our side. So mm -hmm. the leftists, they're not stupid, right? They're just misguided. And I think uh, I think when shit like that happens and they suddenly have to engage in the real world and real world consequences, they begin to move away from that and more into the right wing sphere. Okay. Could I interrupt, gentlemen? I feel like you guys should be cracking a beer open and just uh, barbecuing or something. This has turned into like a nice conversation. You have found a lot of agreement points. Well, a lot of people when they get invited to a debate or discussion. They'll watch some of my content because my content, like when I'm streaming or I'm making response videos, uh, very caustic, very toxic. Um, but when I want to have a, when someone's willing to have a conversation with me, I'm not going to just call them a, a goddamn cuckold and laugh at it. I, I still think marrying a single mother makes someone more of a cuckold than not. But it's like, what are we going to do? Am I going to repeat my arguments five times? He's going to do it. And then I'm going to get angry and call him a cuck boy. Then that, that's not really productive mm -hmm. in my mind. Yeah, I would I would still say, though, um, the, the, the problem if you have a word which alludes to this this um, this idea of cuckoldry and it just means basically anybody doing anything to you that you just don't want them to do to you, then that just basically makes everybody on planet Earth a cuckold. Yeah, well, I like to use cuckoldry. <laughs> would I call you a cuckold? No. When I say you are you marrying a single mother is engaging in cucketry, yes, I would. But um, but if I was getting taxed, that would be cucketry. Oh yeah, well it's a different level of cucketry, right? We're getting we're all getting cucked by the government. Yeah, but I mean, how do we ascertain what the levels here are? <laughs> Isn't it? And she's just kind of using intuition for this. Like much, I feel yeah. I feel like this is more more cuckoldry. This is why when I when I use etymology, I'm trying to look at the root of the word, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to d discern what category it goes in. So every word is going to point to a meaning and a category. So if we use the word we're pointing to the meaning and the category, it seems like it's very much sexual and is very much related to offspring. Mm -hmm. But if we just kind of take that etymology away and say just anything anybody ever does against your will is cucketry, uh, mm -hmm. then I, I think that we've just lost what the word meaning is. Yeah, I think calling someone a cuck or saying they are engaging in cucketry is not the same as saying they're a cuckold. Cuckold, I like to reserve for you know, the Murphys. Okay, so, okay, so let me let me make sure I got it right then. So, cuckold, we would agree is going to be like Jack Murphy. He's a cuckold, mm -hmm. and yes. we would agree like a king who raised a prince that the bard had actually sired, and he there was no paternity test. That would be a cuckold too. So we have those two things would be cuckolds. Yes, but you know, it's when it comes to what's worse, it's like cuckoldry is like temperature. Everything has a temperature. Okay, it's a scale. You know, just because I say, um, you know, this table has a temperature of what, 72 degrees doesn't mean that ice doesn't also have a temperature. Yeah, I agree with that. It's more of like a, I think, cuck, I see cuckoldry. Yeah, more but I, it seems to me like it's just two categories. We're talking about two different categories. So when we say cuckold, we're both agreeing on what that category is. And then when we say mm -hmm. cuckoldry, your definition of cuckoldry is basically anything uh, which is done to you, the person that uh you didn't want done to you that would be I think it's i would i would say it's any transfer of resources from a man mm -hmm. to another man's offspring that's what i would say so like okay so really though because like if you're let's say you're a soldier in a foreign war and you give mm -hmm. a kid a candy bar that's cucketry then 
Yeah, that's a good point. Let me think. Let me think of a, a better because is, there is a sexual nature of it, right? Yeah, I think, I think there has to be. I think there has to be donating. You know, like donating to like uh, some food aid, or donating for I don't know, like shoes to some homeless kid. That's obviously not cuckoldry, right? So like, and, but, and by like, if you if you were to go back to the old Roman Empire when they like mm-hmm. let kids die of exposure. And you rolled out if you if you had a time machine and you went back and you like saved that kid from dying you wouldn't call that cockatree, right? No, no, but I would say if you married a woman with a bunch of kids and you raised those kids and you spent your life's energy raising those kids instead of having more of your own kids, that's cockatree. What if you did both? Both as in like raising someone, marrying and raising someone else's kids and donating. And you had your own. And had your own. Mm-hmm. Mm, then you're less then I'd say you're less cut than someone that didn't have any of their own but compared to the version of you that had all your own children you're more cut than that version is okay so uh when we're talking so when we're talking about cucketry then we're gonna we're, we, we can at least exclude some categories so like just providing resources for kids that aren't yours isn't going to fall under that category because that wouldn't make sense yeah a soldier giving a candy bar to a kid in a war zone is not going to be we're not going to consider that cucketry at all yeah I would say if it's if it's not at the expense of your own children or future children, yes, it's not cut the tree. Okay, so then the widow argument would stand. So then, if um, if a widow died and her children died, let's say before you met her, mm. there would be no allocation of resources, so that could not be cockatry. So, what are you doing with this widow? Because she's dead. Just no, 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 no. <laughs> she's the widow. Okay, there's a widow, and yeah. her kids have died. Yeah, her kids have died, and her died. husband died. Yeah. Oh, and the kids? Yeah. Well, then you're not transferring any resources to her kids because you're dead. So that's not cockatry. I'd say it's not overt cockatry. I think anything worse than anything that's not no harm and no diamond on some level is a little bit cuckish. Yes, I think that is. But so it, so not, even yeah, sleeping you know, oh, so you're a cuck because you married a widow. I, don't, I wouldn't. Yeah. So, so even sleeping with a woman who slept with a with a uh, man before you, you're still a cock. If you're giving her money and providing for her, it's worse than no hymen, no diamond. So the only way, essentially, it, somebody would not be practicing cucketry is if they married a virgin. Yeah, but yeah, I'd say that. But you're still getting taxed. But willingly participating, willingly. Yeah, no, but you you're willingly like, like marrying a yeah. chick who yeah. has slept with like seven guys in her oh, lifetime. Yeah, that's, that's some seasoning of cuck flakes on top, yeah. So that's cucketry. Yeah. And so then Joseph, by this, but by that logic, though, Joseph, who is the stepfather of God, would be a cuck. Yeah. Sure. You, I mean, you, you are. I think you're a Christian, right? It, yeah, but I'm not. I'm not attacking Joseph for being a cuckold. He he so, consented to raising the father of God, and I'm not comparing people who marry single mothers. To a dude whose wife gave birth to a messiah yeah that's yeah but he a, didn't know he didn't know that that was the messiah first so she came she came from a convent um and was betrothed to him and was pregnant before she knew that that was the messiah hmm. didn't an angel tell him it was gonna be the yeah but she he had already known she was pregnant by that yeah. time yeah sure i'd say that so he so he's a you think he's a cock he's higher on the mountain of cucketry than a man who didn't consent or a man who didn't have to raise this immaculate conception yeah so i mean again i think i think that we just have to category error so i think we agree on the first category of what a cuckold is and i mm-hmm. think that the second category is um this kind of this word you came up with of cucketry mm-hmm. which essentially just kind of alludes to anything in which a man is utilizing resources as you described um, towards other people's children, but there's then caveats to that where, okay, not in a war zone though, or not if you like find them on the ground and there's no parents around, even though you'd be raising the kid then, not for adoption. So it's not really clear to me what the criteria for cucketry is. It's a fun word, right? Like I'm going to use it now. I'm going to totally, I'm going to oh, steal it man, from you and you. use it. Yeah, I'm, I'm stealing it and I'm using it because it's a fun yeah, word. Right. But I, I'm, I'm just, I'm not clear. I'm still not really clear everything that would go in that category is all. Mm. Do you think do you think any of your children are the Messiah? No. Probably, probably not. Yeah, I would say no. No. Um, you willingly chose a woman with other man's kids yep. to marry and have kids with and give resources to raise those kids. Yeah, that's true. 
That is a much higher level of puckery than a man who was told by an angel that his wife is pregnant with the Messiah. Yeah, I get it, but it's still just going to fit under this criteria of cocketry, whether there's different levels of it. Like, I would say there's different levels of SA. You could say there's different levels of SA, like penetrative, non-penetrative, um, some which are likely far more horrible than others, this type of thing. But it's all going to fall under the same category. And I'm just not clear everything that would fall under this category of cocketry. So if you say, okay, stepfather is going to fall under that, okay, mm -hmm. why? Well, because you're giving resources to someone else's kids. Like, okay. But I can yep. give you many, many examples of people giving resources to other people's kids where that doesn't fall under cocketry, and you kind of agree with that. If the resources that you give away do not inhibit the resources that can go to your own children. So yeah, but that could be up in the war. Right? Yeah, but I mean, that that still could. I mean, like if you if you give to a children's do uh, charity, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's going to take away resource from your own kids. Yeah, if, you, if your kids are. If your kids can't afford, you know, new shoes and you're donating to give shoes to inner city kids, you are a couple. Yes. That's cucketry too. Well, what if they, what if you can't afford it for them and you have a little bit left over, but they're not going to like, they're not going to get the nicest shoes and then you're going to split those resources and ordinarily they could have nicer shoes, but you split the resources and then give that to children's char charity. Is that still cucketry? <laughs> Are we talking like what, what kind of shoes are we talking about? Are your kids like using water bottles? No, like no, no. They, they, they have like regular serviceable shoes, but mm -hmm. they're not like, they're not really high grade and you could get them high grade. It's just that you choose to get them kind of normal shoes and then split it. Or you choose to get them like maybe not the nicest toys around and then split it and then give the rest of it to like a children's charity. I, or I would something. say that those, that children's charity, the resources you give to them. There's definitely other parts in your child's life that could benefit from those resources besides shoes. Okay. Well, then let me ask you this. Um, you, I, I'm, I understand that you work in the medical field, mm -hmm. and um, I'm, I'm guessing that you have tons and tons of patients who come in who you take care of who have forms of state assistant, Medicaid, Medicare, things like that, right? Yep. And then, let's say I'm not directly involved with the patient care, but let's – yeah, <laughs> Okay, so you're not you're not like providing the surgeries and this kind of thing, but but if you if you were, well, I, I don't know, I'm making an assumption, right? No, I, I don't know. That's you that's can, that's but but anyway, so you're you're providing this care by the state paying you to do mm -hmm. that. Doesn't that make any of those children you provide the care for cuckolded by you? Aren't you basically cucking them? I'm cucking the kids by providing medical services to them. Is that what you said? Yeah, because it's coming from the state, from other resources. No, I think that I think the people, which is everybody, paying taxes to fund Medicare and mm -hmm. Medicaid are getting cucked because mm -hmm. illegals will go into the hospital mm -hmm. and get basically free health care. I'm just profiting off of the cucketry system. So you're so you're participating in the cucketry system. Yeah, I mean, every when you pay taxes. You yeah, participate I mean, I, I tend to agree. I'm just I'm trying to figure out all of the kind of dimensions to what cocketry would entail. Mm -hmm. So if a person were to take their wife um, to the hospital, let's say. Yes. Or I, I'm sorry. Let's make it even easier. Take their their um, their kid to the hospital and um, and then says, OK, can you provide care for this kid? And then he pays you to provide care for the kid. Is, yes. is he, he, that's not cucketry. I'm getting paid for a service. Yeah, I know, but if he's, my, my job, if my job mm -hmm. is to, uh, let's say my job is to remove, uh, wasp stingers from kids. Yeah. I'm getting paid to do that. Now, another guy is sitting in the ER and he looks over and says, oh man, that sucks. I'm going to pay that kid's bill. He's a cuck. Yeah. He paid taxes. Yeah. You're up you're, you, If you pay taxes, you pay for the health care of millions of illegals jumping the border with horrible health problems who are getting cut by taxes. No, no, no. I'm saying if 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 a if a guy's in the hospital, you treat you treat the kid, right? His kid. Yes. And uh, and he's like, Oh man, this 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 copay is killer, you know, or whatever. Uh, this this bill is killer. And somebody in the hospital looks over and says, Hey, you know what, man? It's around Christmas time. I'm gonna pay for that bill. He's a cock. Does he have kids? Yeah. Are the kids, yeah, he has the, kids. Yeah. Do the kids have medical bills that need to be paid? Well, I mean, maybe not, but any form of resources which he would provide necessarily is going to be resources that his kids aren't going to have, right? Yeah, I think it is 
more cuck than not doing it on the level of cuck mountain cuckatry, right? But I don't necessarily think that <laughs> charity towards someone's kid willingly, unless it hurts your like, what are the kids? It goes on a deeper level. Like, what are you, what is this kid's eating? Are his kids eating modern American food? Are there are there? Are, they have, a, there they have a health. They have over? they have a healthy diet and this and that, but. Kind of regardless of what their personal circumstances would be, whether they were well taken care of or not well taken care of, necessarily, if this guy takes care of this other kid's bill, mm -hmm. that is going to be taking resources away from his kids. That's like yeah, an entailment of that. Think of it. Yeah, that is cuckoo How is this kid's going to buy a house when it's a million dollars for a house? He could have yeah. taken those resources and put it away. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't I don't really think we have much to... Um, I don't even think that we have much in the way to disagree with here. If the second criteria for this of, of cucketry is so broad that it would entail even acts of charity and we're all just kind of cucks, then I, I guess I just don't I give a shit. I think on the other end of cuck mountain is self being selfish, right? Because obviously most people will be like, hey, paying for some kid's cancer treatment doesn't make you a cuck. I'd say, well, putting that money away for your kid's house would probably be more useful to the kids. And someone's like, dude, you're a selfish asshole. I'm like, yeah, probably. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Okay. Well, then I guess I guess all of us engage in cucketry and uh, to, exactly. to yeah, some yeah, degree it's... and some and many of them do it on purpose for the purpose of charitability. And then we don't really disagree on what a cuckold is. So I think I think and, the debate's been resolved. Well, some people will marry a woman with children. Mm -hmm. And I find that a level of cucketry I would not accept. Okay. I don't really know where to take it from there, Sarah. <laughs> Was 40 minutes it wasn't even 40 minutes uh undead chronic did you ever have any other points of contention i just wouldn't let my son marry a single mother i'd probably strangle him before that that's fair that's fair well i mean gentlemen i don't want to eat up any of, more of your time if you're both uh, satisfied with the response and yeah. and all set we can end on closing <laughs> statements well i just say it's nice to meet you uh this was a um, cool. this was kind of a breath of fresh air debate i felt like you were very good faith and answered the questions that i had for you and uh appreciate that i just i think that we're kind of having a semantic argument and i think semantics are important to arguments um, and I think that you have just kind of made this category error of a cuckoldry is X and then cucketry is Y and mm -hmm. you fall, everybody falls in, in some way to this category Y, but we agree on category X. So, I mean, I don't really, if that, if that's all it means, then I, I, I think, guess I just I don't have an issue climbing, with it. I think climbing the mountain to go closer to being a cuckold is a bad thing to do. And I think you've got your Patagonia on and you're hiking. And I'm at the bottom of the mountain, I'm like, bro, stop. But I mean, at this point, it's like, dude, divorce your wife. Like, that's not, that's not gonna, you know, there's no, there's no fix to this. It's more young men, don't marry single mothers. Yeah, but you I wouldn't be, be I don't think that that's bad man. advice. Yep. That's advice I would generally agree with. <laughs> In fact, the, the people I see more giving that advice out nowadays than anybody else are single mothers who've been through the, the ringer in the system and go, wait, I really fucked up here. Mm. So that's uh, at least that's the turn that I'm starting to see. But, you know, feminism is entrenched. So who knows? Who knows how it'll go? But anyway, that's all I had for my closing statement. I appreciate it. Uh, closing for you, Undead Chronic. Man, fuck you for making me agree with you sometimes. <laughs> I wanted to yell. <laughs> <laughs> Was that it yeah, for you, uh, Chronic? Yeah. I don't really have anything else. It's just lifestyle differences. I think that marrying single mother and I, we just had we just talked about it so that's pretty that's much fair. it. that's fair well let well, me all, just well all right guys um i gotta get prepared for another podcast tonight sarah thank you again for having me on your stream i appreciate you doing the legwork mm -hmm. for this it was very kind of you you guys have a wonderful night Peace. thanks andrew and undead if you want the fuck was that this is your, this was your, this was your champion. <laughs> this, this is your, that was your champion. <laughs> Come on, dude. He see, I mean, he seemed all right. He seemed all right. All right. But. Uh, I guess if they don't have personal attacks, what do they got?
No. I, and I, our family. The, yeah, men want women who are passionate and ambitious, even if that means, you know, being a, a wife and, and a homemaker and raising your children. Mm -hmm. Don't give a but, shit about ambition. <laughs> Fuck it. So you don't want to be with someone who has goals? That men care about ambition. They don't care about you women's don't care, ambitions. So you want to be with somebody who doesn't have any goals in life. Cause that's, I didn't say goals. I said ambition. You don't I mean, need to have be ambitious. Like you. Uh, ambition. For, for, I don't think you understand what ambition means. Why don't you tell me? Go ahead, tell them. What? I'm not good at uh, definitions on the fly at all, so. I Wait, thought you, you I didn't just... know what it meant. What Wait, the fuck? I mean, I, I don't think you do, but. Just oh, I, I guess. Well, I know you don't. <laughs> I know for sure you don't. You can't even tell me what it means. Being able to describe something and, and write, you know, the, what mm -hmm. it means in a dictionary is not the same thing. No, as but you br you means. said you asked him. He doesn't know what you mean by ambition. So he's asking you to define it. Yeah, ambition I, is having goals. I can Google it if you want. I can Google it. That would be it. great. But ambition is having goals and, and seeking to, you know, uh, rise above where you're at, you know, building skills, you know, having a goal and trying to reach it. Andrew, do you, when you say you don't, men don't care about it, ambition, do you mean it within the context of like career achievement, academic achievement? Yeah, well, what achievement? I'm talking about is. Because what if a <laughs> woman's ambitious for a family? Like, you would agree that that would be. She's, she wants. Well, Not it, even that. Again, we need to kind of narrow down what we mean here when we're talking about ambition. So, for me, when I'm when I'm thinking about ambition, I'm thinking of I want to have stellar achievement. I want to have something which I'm which I'm moving towards, which is to rise above some station or to move towards this kind of overtly worthy thing. Generally speaking. No, men don't give a shit. Like if you start out a good cook and you end up a good cook, they don't fucking care. They don't care. They don't give a shit. They don't want. You don't need to become a better and better. Cook. They don't give a shit. They they don't care. Like if you're just good enough, you're good enough. They don't give a shit. Hmm. I've never seen any of them say, "Nope, you got to be." Can you got to You got to really. Before, hold on. I want her. I want to give her an opportunity to respond. You seem to disagree with Andrew. Do you want to? I think generally speaking, people seek uh, a partner who does have goals, and goals are what give your life meaning. Can, can I come in on this? Goals? Let, let me it come depends, in. Go ahead. But it doesn't have to Here. be job related at all. So I think something that I have goals. I want to. I want to be a homesteader. I want to. I want to raise a family. Like I want to become a better cook. You but, brought up cooking. Uh, like, I think yeah, we are. Why does a man that's care appealing. about those goals though? Because that he, you want to be a homesteader. Because he would like to do so as well. Okay, example. so then. <laughs> So it's his goals. It's his goals. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, you have. But I, I, I think the context of the con the together. context of the conversation is occupational, career, educational achievement. Okay. That's the context. Not, and Andrew maybe has differing views on this. I don't object to a woman who is desirous or has goals to having a family. It's not an but I don't think that's what's. It's what I'm just saying about what what is cared about. What sure. the preference is. But. Let's keep it within the context of career, success, financial, uh, educational achievement. And men you, in those realms, men don't really care about women's ambition in that regard. No, I think I, I, I agree on that. Oh, it was just unclear when you said, you know, men don't care if women have ambitions. I, I just OK, I think so, here, let's not linger long because I want to try to wrap. Wait, but, but quickly, but for the men. So say, for example, right, you meet this girl and um, she has she's in school for something long term but like you guys both mutually decide like y'all want to start settle down and start a family do you think that she should forfeit her career for a potential husband and family yeah 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 what about you <laughs> what about me the <laughs> like what do you do should you think, do should the woman forfeit her career for a potential family and husband should she well it depends what the arrangement is going to be do you want to have one kid two kid three kids four no, so if if her standard is going to be well while i'm pregnant i don't want to be in the workforce and then during those early years i don't want to uh be in the workforce and then i also want to have three four five kids you are going to forfeit your career so remember the example and well and if i can give my own perspective yeah. If I can give my own perspective. Let's say I want to have seven sons. Uh, 
and I'm a high earner, and you want to go pursue your career where at the top end of your career, you're going to be making $75,000 a year, and I'm making, say I'm making seven, seven figures a year, no, I think you should take care of the kids. So why, then, why mm -hmm. do that career if I can provide? I agree. So in the example that we were saying, like remember the 25 year old having kids and then the 40 year old man, right? So say the 25 year old is just starting her career and all of a sudden the 40 year old wants kids. Should she just like stop? Because she's obviously very early in her career. Should she just, should she just stop what she's doing? Yes. <laughs> But you can have a career and have children at the you same time. You can also time. not have a career and take care of your children but at the same time. You yep. can do both. The, none of these are mutually exclusive. So yeah. her should, her should, ought, what should, what's optimal? What's optimal is you listen to your 40-year-old husband. If he tells you stay the fuck home and watch the kids, then you stay the fuck home and you watch the kids. It's simple. If I could play devil's advocate for one. Um. You're such a misogynist, <laughs> is this a Andrew. Time? You are just a misogynist. And the whatever podcast, being a feminist platform, does not appreciate your, your well, attitude. Well, so did she ask? She just yeah. like, the ask is, what things should be done if the husband wants this thing? Yes, from my worldview, yeah, you need to do what ultimately your husband tells you to do. I am sorry. I, I, I do want to try to wrap up relatively soon, so I'm just going to try to get through some of our last talking points here. No. I, and I, our family. The, yeah, men want women who are passionate and ambitious, even if that means, you know, being a, a wife and, and a homemaker and raising your children. Mm -hmm. Don't give a but, shit about ambition. <laughs> Fuck you, who, so you don't want to be with someone who has you goals? That men care about ambition. They don't care about you women's ambition. So you want to be with somebody who doesn't have any goals in life. Cause I didn't say goals. I said ambition. You don't I mean, need to have be ambitious. Like you uh, ambitious. I don't think you understand what ambition means. Why don't you tell me? Go ahead. Tell them <sighs> what? I'm not good at uh, definitions on the fly at all, so. I Wait, thought you, you I didn't just... know what it meant. What Wait, the but, fuck? I mean, I, I don't think you do, but just Oh, I, I guess, well, I know you don't. <laughs> I know for sure you don't. You can't even tell me what it means. Being able to describe something and, and write, you know, the, what it means in a dictionary is not the same thing no, as No, but you, br you said, you asked him, he doesn't know what you mean by ambition. So he's asking you to define it. Yeah, ambition I, is having goals. I can Google it if you want. I can Google it. That would be it. great. But ambition is having goals and, and seeking to, you know, uh, rise above where you're at, you know, building skills, you know, having a goal and trying to reach it. Andrew, do you, when you say you don't, men don't care about ambition, do you mean it within the context of like career achievement, academic achievement? Yeah, well, what I'm achievement? talking about is. Because what if a woman's <laughs> ambitious for a family? Like you would agree that that would be, she's, she wants. Well, Not it, even that. Again, we need to kind of narrow down what we mean here when we're talking about ambition. So, for me, when I'm when I'm thinking about ambition, I'm thinking of I want to have stellar achievement. I want to have something which I'm which I'm moving towards, which is to rise above some station or to move towards this kind of overtly worthy thing. Generally speaking, no nah, men don't give a shit. Like if you start out a good cook and you end up a good cook, they don't fucking care. They don't care. They don't give a shit. They don't want, you don't need to become a better and better cook. They don't give a shit. They, they don't care. Like if you're just good enough, you're good enough. They don't give a shit. Hmm. I've never seen any of them say, nope, you gotta be, Can you I gotta, you gotta wait, really. Wait, before, hold on. I want her, I want to give her an opportunity to respond. You seem to disagree with Andrew. Do you want to? I think generally speaking, people seek uh, a partner who does have goals, and goals are what give your life meaning. Can, but can what I kind comment of on this? Goals? Let, let me it come It depends, but it doesn't have to be yeah. job related at all. So I think something that I when have goals. I want to. I want to be a homesteader. I want to. I want to raise a family. Like I want to become a better cook. You but, brought up cooking. Uh, like, I think yeah, we but are. Why does a man that's care appealing. about those goals though? Because that he, you want to be a homesteader. Because he would like to do so as well. Okay, example. so then. <laughs> So it's his goals. It's his goals. <laughs> but <laughs> well, you have. But I, I, I think the context of the con the context together. of the conversation is occupational, career, educational achievement. Okay. That's the context. Not, and Andrew maybe has differing views on this. I don't object to a woman who 
is desirous or has goals to having a family. It's not an but I don't think that's what it's what I'm just saying about what what is cared about, what sure. the preference is. But let's keep it within the context of career, success, financial, uh, educational achievement. And men you, in those realms, men don't really care about women's ambition in that regard. No, I think I I I agree, Matt. Oh. It was just unclear when you said, you know, men don't care if women have ambitions. I, I just okay. I think so, here, let's not linger long wait, because I want to try to wrap. Wait, but, but quickly, but for the men, so say for example, right, you meet this girl and um, she has she's in school for something long term, but like you guys both mutually decide like y'all want to start settle down and start a family. Do you think that she should forfeit her career for a potential husband and family? Yeah. 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 What about you? What about me? The <laughs> like, what do you do? Should, do <laughs> should the woman forfeit her career for a potential family and husband? Should she? Well, it depends what the arrangement is going to be. Do you want to have one kid, two kid, three kids, four? No, so if, if her standard is going to be, well, while I'm pregnant, I don't want to be in the workforce. And then during those early years, I don't want to... Uh, be in the workforce and then I also want to have three four five kids you are going to forfeit your career so remember the example and well and if I can give my own perspective yeah. if I can give my own perspective let's say I want to have seven sons uh, and I'm a high earner and you want to go pursue your career where at the top end of your career you're going to be making seventy five thousand dollars a year and I'm making Say I'm making seven seven figures a year. No. I think you should take care of the kids. So why the, why mm -hmm. do that career if I can provide? I agree. So in the example that we were saying, like remember the twenty five year old having kids and then the forty year old man, right? So say the twenty five year old is just starting her career and all of a sudden the forty year old wants kids. Should she just like stop? Because she's obviously very early in her career. Should she just should she just stop what she's doing? Yes. <laughs> but you can have a career and have children at the you same time. You can also time. not have a career and take care of your children <laughs> but, at the same time. You yep. can do both. The none of these are mutually exclusive. So yeah. her should, her should, ought. What should? What's optimal? What's optimal is you listen to your forty-year-old husband. If he tells you stay the fuck home and watch the kids, then you stay the fuck home and you watch the kids. It's simple. If I could play devil's advocate for one. Um. You're such a misogynist, <laughs> is this a You are just a misogynist, and the whatever podcast, being a feminist platform, does not appreciate your, your well, attitude. Well, so did she ask? She just, yeah. like, the ask is, what things should be done if the husband wants this thing? Yes, from my worldview, yeah, you need to do what ultimately your husband tells you to do. I am sorry, I, I, I do wanna to try to wrap up relatively soon, so I'm just gonna to try to get through some of our last talking points here.